here as quickly as possible. So if we can all find our seats. We're asking all the uh, kids, all the four-year-old kids are sitting on this side in the first four rows with their leaders, and the three-year-olds are over here in this section with their leaders. So after we get, after we have a word of prayer here, we're going to have all the kids come up and stand right in front anyway. So this is just a temporary seating assignment. Um, well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Church. The Iwana Cubbies have taken over. <laughs> uh, my name's Roger Reppert. I'm uh, the director of the four-year-old Cubbies. And uh, I think most people are in here now. So let's all bow our heads and close our eyes and have a word of prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can be here in church tonight. We thank you for all these clubbers here tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, for their parents and their grandparents and aunts and uncles who have helped them memorize their verses all year, Lord. We come here to celebrate their accomplishments tonight, Lord. Uh, we want to uh, lift up your name and praise, Lord, and we just thank you for all the work that they've done. God, we just pray that they would truly be hiding your word in their hearts, Lord. We pray for each and every one of the kids here, Lord, that they would uh, one day, as soon as possible, Lord, if they haven't already, that they would accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We pray that they'd grow up to serve you with their whole lives, Lord. And uh, God, we just ask your blessing on all the activities we have planned here tonight. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, with that being said, I'd like all the clubbers to come on up front and line up. We're going to have the four-year-olds on this side, on the floor. Start with one row on the floor, maybe one row behind. And the three-year-olds on this side. This is the funnest part, watching all these kids try to get organized here. All right, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance, so I need everybody to stand up and remove your hats. And we need to put our right hand up in the sky and point up to heaven. And then we put that right hand right on our hearts. And now we all look at the flag, and we say, I... Good job, guys. We collect the flags here. All right, now in four-year-old cubbies, we do this thing right after the uh, flag where we say our cubbies mouth. Oh, you guys can be seated. Thank you. You guys can stand up. In cubbies, in four-year-old cubbies, we do uh, our cubbies motto, which three-year-olds I'm sure you guys know as well. So why don't you all say the Cubby's motto for everybody. Ready? Jesus. Did you all catch that? And now, one thing we do in four-year-olds is we teach them the church motto. It's a big, long motto, right? And some of you guys, some of you parents are probably wondering why kids are coming home with stories about Mr. Rupert's shoe flying off. That's because at the end, when they say, tell everyone, if they yell it loud enough, my shoe flies off. But I told them, it's not happening tonight. 
It is not happening for the awards night. I tied them extra tight tonight. I'm not going to be embarrassed tonight. But let's all say the church motto together, okay? Ready? Oh, man. Oh, now everybody... Now everybody's got to see my stinky socks. All right. See what you three-year-olds have to look forward to next year? Let me get my order of ceremony here. We're going to have, uh, oh, we got to say our two verses that we say every week. Okay, our two theme verses. All right, first we say A is for all. All right, Romans 3.23. And next we say C is for Romans 5, 8. Very good. Awesome. All right. Now it is song time. So the three-year-olds are going to sing first. Oh, we all sing the Covey song together. Yes, you're right. All right, now the four-year-olds are going to sing our blast-off song. All right. Great job, kids. Now we're all going to sing Galatians 2.20. Amen. Love that one. All right, now the... Now the four-year-old class is going to sing... Is it your turn? Yeah, your turn. Three-year-olds are going to sing now.
And three-year-olds, you want to sing your last song? Do your other one song. Amen. All right, now, four-year-olds, we have our last song we're going to sing. All right, let's hear it for the Cubbies. And now we have, yeah, why don't you guys all go have a seat with your leaders again. We're going to have a puppet show now. So the four-year-olds get the privilege of having a puppet show every week. Don't pay any attention to the blue shirts getting behind the curtain. Boys and girls, this is our final hello of the year. Our last night of club. Please pardon if I break into random fits of tears. Goodbyes are never easy. Buck up all that blubbering, lovey, before you rub off on me. Pull yourselves together, you two. We've got to get through one last show before you two lose your marbles over there. It's just that. <laughs> Oh, the cubbies are so wonderful, learning all those verses and songs and praising the Lord. It warms my heart so much to hear the tears just shoot out of my eyeballs. And don't get us started on the summertime. No cubbies for three whole months? Timmy's dad really puts me to work, too, with all the new baby lambs growing up and needing to learn the ropes and all. Summer is work, work, work all the time. Hello, 
on, guys. Top of the morning to you, folks. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. It's always a pleasure to see you, Katie. We heard all the commotion about the summer and thought we'd stop by. Yeah, really. You guys think you have it bad. The gift shop is open long hours in the summer, and that means we have to sit perfectly still for three whole months. Do you have Lord. any idea what that's like to have a neck like mine sit still for hours on end? You may as well tie it in a knot and start whispering goodbyes. Oh, the same goes for this trunk. Oh, the pain. Okay, all right, everybody. It sounds like we all have something to complain or be sad about, mm -hmm. but I also know there are so many things to be glad about as well. Oh, what could possibly cheer me up on the darkest of days, Cubby Bear? Well, how about celebrating our Cubbies memorizing God's Word and graduating to Sparky's next year or Cubby's again? Oh. I am proud of them, Cubby. They've done a spectacular job. Oh, they're all stars in my book. But I'll sure miss them. Good. I'm glad that's settled then. Settled? 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 What do you think this is? The Louisiana Purchase? This isn't settled? For once, Gigi and I agree on something, Cubby Bear. Group hug. Backburner, Ernie. We got priorities here. Oh, oh, yeah. Let's all calm down and talk this out. I'm sure Cubby has a solution. Of course I do. Let's see. Hmm. I'll talk to Timmy's dad about a lunch break for all those residing in the gift shop. And, Lovey, I'll set lots of time apart for us to play together so you won't miss the cubby so much. I accept. And, Katie, I'll volunteer to help teach the baby lambs how to be properly herded. You are a lifesaver, cubby, a true trail tail partner. I have a feeling my summer is going to be very busy. Well, cubby buddies, we hope you all have a lovely summer. And don't forget to get excited about the amazing fun and learning to come next year. We are very proud of you and love getting to spend time with you this year. Oh, we love you. Later, dudes. Happy trails. Toodaloo. Bye, Cubby Buddies. All right, all you three-year-olds get a puppet show every week next year. My wife writes those all, so um, such a blessing. Okay, now we're going to have our gospel message. I'd like to welcome Mr. Andrew Lazaro to the stage. He's uh, the director of the Sparkies, which you four-year-olds are going to get to know this guy real well next year. I should be. There it goes. All right, that's much better now. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way. All right, welcome. Um, I'm Andrew Lazaro. So for you cubbies that are going to be moving up next year, you'll be getting to join myself and some of the other leaders up in the Sparkies. And so for those of you who don't know me, I just wanted to take an opportunity just to open up with something a little bit light, tell you a little bit about myself. You see, the other day I was in Brugger's, and... Uh, I walked in to get my coffee like I do most mornings. I set my mug down, and I look around, and coffee's gone. And I think to myself, you know, stealing someone's coffee, that should be called mugging. <laughs> and then like, as I'm walking out the door, I, I open the door, and I see there's a clown. And I open the door for him, and I hold it. He walks through. It was a nice jester. I don't, get do I don't get to do my jokes too often, so my wife is rolling her eyes over there, so. 
Because when I was a kid, I thought about all these cool ideas. So one time I put my grandma on speed dial. You know, we press a button, it dials up everybody. I called it Instagram. Mm -hmm. I, but I always wasn't a good boy. There were some times where I would, uh, I would actually kind of like try to do, uh, do things I probably shouldn't. You see, my father, he, would, uh, he shook his finger at me, and he's like, Andrew, if you keep on pushing it, you're going to get it. And so in a moment of wisdom, I thought to myself, hey, Dad, you mean like if I push my luck or I push the envelope? He's like, yeah, that's it. You push, your, push the envelope, you're going to get it. Things are going to budge. And I thought, well, no, Dad. If I push the envelope, no matter how far I push it, it will always still be stationary. <laughs> I found out what the paddle was like that night. So, all righty. That's about as bad as it gets. So we're going to open up with a word of prayer. <laughs> we're open to the word of prayer. So everyone, we're going to fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, our Cubbies have had an amazing year. And I know that we anticipate them joining us up in Sparky's next year or continuing on in their Cubbies. But dear Lord, I just I pray for tonight that the words we speak can be uplifting to you. I don't honestly care if they remember a thing that I say, but I want the words to be hidden into their hearts. And I want them to be uplifting to serve you in your will and all we do. Let me pray. Amen. All righty. So, tonight, we're all going to put our thinking caps on. Because I asked for fireworks and laser shows, but I got bad jokes instead. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put our thinking caps on. And I want everyone to use our imagination caps. So, tonight, I invite you to take a journey through your imagination. So, everyone, I want you to close your eyes. I'm watching, yeah. Take a breath. And that's it. It's time to slow down. But not too much. I don't want any of you falling asleep. Now breathe in. Nice and slow. Everybody breathe in. And out. That's it. Do it again. One more time in. And out. Now come to me, with me as we imagine a world just splendor. All around you is color and brightness. You walk on a path of soft clouds, and as you walk, you feel each step landing softly and are greeted by the smell of fresh flowers. When you look up, you look up to see birds and butterflies and hear their sweet chirping and the mixing of the sounds of fast-running water. As you step even further down the path, it opens up to rays of sunshine and a rainbow stretching over a roaring waterfall. Everything is calm and everything is right. And you just bathe it all in. But what's that? From far off, entering the corner of your eye, you see a small strand of smoke. A chill crawls up your back and a shiver goes down to your toes. Suddenly, all that was right and well seems to be fading away. The clouds beneath your feet, well, they fade away to dust. And that waterfall just dries right on up. The only sound you hear now is the howl of the wind. And you just know something isn't right. But that's when you feel it. Like a long forgotten melody coming back to you from a song long ago, you hear the words and you remember the excitement. A hand softly and carefully is placed on your shoulder. And as you turn to look up, you see your friend. And in that moment, all that was wrong is paused. You smile at your friend as they take your hand and help you up, back to your feet. With a reassuring look, you go together to find that path of clouds and the ray of sunshine. Strangely, even without knowing exactly where you're headed to, you know it will be better with your friend by your side. All right, guys, you can open your eyes. 
in Genesis, we read the words, And the Lord God said, It is not right that man should be alone. And how good it is to know that we are not meant to walk through this world alone. You see here, cubbies, God knows that we will have many things in our life that will be hard and sometimes even scary. But God has placed friends in our lives to help us find our way, to teach us, to be there for us when we need them, and even, I suggest, to help protect us. Sprinkled throughout the Old Testament, we find the wisdom given to us about friendship. Proverbs reminds us that a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. That iron sharpeth iron, so that, so a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. These and others come to mind. But how fitting that these verses appear in Proverbs, that we find that wisdom that I can only assume was influenced by one of the greatest friendships we find in the Bible, that of David and Jonathan. In 1 Samuel, we read that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. These were friends who certainly could have been rivals, and things could have certainly di been different, but God placed them together. They were not related, but were closer than if they were brothers. They fought battles, they dined together, and would do anything for each other. The Bible tells us time and time again, though, of the jealousy of King Saul, Jonathan's father, towards that of David. And that jealousy even brought Saul to want to do harm to David. And yet it was Jonathan who stepped up to defend his friend, his brother, even to the point of contesting with his father and the tip of a spear. And it wasn't by accident. You see, in Proverbs, we find that if a man has friends, he must show himself friendly. And there, in that, is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. David and Jonathan's friendship can be seen as a model for us to this day. It wasn't easy, and by no means. It was complicated, since there was this marriage to Jonathan's sister, so he technically was a brother-in-law. All the while, Saul was plotting to kill David. That made things a little rough. But they had a friendship that was characterized by service and sacrifice. So I ask you, where is your friend? Are they helping you to become better? Or are they talking about other people behind their backs? Are they angry? Are they easily offended? Are they always stirring up trouble? We're reminded that those are the ones we are supposed to stay away from, to guard ourselves against that. However, if you can point out to your friend tonight, that's great. And if you're still working on developing those friendships, that's wonderful too. But you might ask yourself, who would want to be my friend? I'm not cool like David or perfect in any way. I never killed a lion or a bear or a giant. You guys might have heard of that story. Let me tell you, you do have a friend, and that friend is our Jesus. He is our friend. In fact, you can't do any better than him. He teaches us. He has our backs. He stands with us. That way back to the path, he is the way the truth, the light, so we may find the path. And yes, he even sacrificed his very life to us unto death so that we could be saved and join with him one day in heaven. It doesn't get any better than that, guys. Jesus' friendship is the real model, even more so than David and Jonathan. Jesus showed us true friendship is a form of love. And to point this out, I just want to read through a couple of verses in the Gospel of John. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus saying at this point, ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the, his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things I have heard in my Father I have made known to you. Jesus saying again, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth the fruit 
and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give to you. These things I command, that ye love one another. God, Jesus, he calls us his friends. We are those sinners and the imperfect, yet he still loves us the same. In Romans, we're reminded that God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He is our friend, and he died to save us. The Lord God said it's not good for man to be alone. We were never alone. We've never been alone. We might be late in finding our friend, but we have that friend in Jesus, and he's always been there, loving us. He says that we are his friends if we do whatsoever he commanded us. And then he commanded us that we love one another. So children, tonight, love your friends. Love your neighbors. It's time we think about and enjoy our friendships that we have with each other, but that with Jesus. And cherish God's sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. It was a great mess. I, I almost want to have the uh, Tuesday night men's choir come up here and sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That was great. <laughs> so now it's time for us to pass out the awards. So first, the three-year-old class is going to go, and I'm going to invite Kevin Wing up to um, orchestrate passing out the awards to the three-year-old class. Um, the three olds have been fun to work with this year. Uh, I've been with them for about three years, and uh, something I was thinking about when I was watching as they were doing the songs, and it's a funny statement, but uh, I realized we're not as organized as the four-year-olds. Uh, I guess maybe when they age another year, it'll be a little bit more organized, but uh, we had a great year with them, and I'm glad that you guys all could bring them out and we could pour some truth and light into their life. Um, I guess we'll start with my table and Craig's table. Craig's been serving this year. He helped out. He's been a great help. And uh, we'll start with uh, Levi. Erwin, come on up, buddy. He got the award for completion this year. Turn around. I guess. See if your mom's out there. I don't know if anyone's taking pictures. Oh, there she is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hold on, buddy. You want to sit stand with Go ahead. All right, good job, buddy. Good job. Next, we have uh, Sawyer Lofthouse. He got the award for completion as well. Come on up, Sawyer. Turn around. See your mom? Smile. All right, go ahead. Good job, Sawyer. Um, next we have Mason. Mason Marcel, come on, Mason. He had the uh, award for completion as well. Hold it down. All right, good job, Mason. And last we have Carter. Come on up, buddy. He got the award for completion as well. Hold your ward down. All right, good job, buddy. All right, Craig, you can uh, sit. You can go sit. Okay, go ahead, sit down. Um, next, we'll have Beth Ferris come up. Beth, if you want to bring your whole table, that'll be fine. Oh. Yeah, come on up. Come here. Come on, guys. Come up here. Come here. Great. Yeah, that was grace, right? 
All right, first we have, well, uh, Beth has been with us uh, serving for 35 years. Um, she does the Bible lessons at the three-year-olds. Uh, without her, we'd be pretty lost. Um, she also takes care of attendance and uh, makes sure all of your kids are accounted for, and uh, that's a very important thing. So first we have Joseph Burrio. We got the award for completion and the merit award, which means that he completed all the, uh, the verses, the review verses, and the golden apple uh, activities they have every week. Do you want to hold your award? Yeah, open it up. Is Grace? Grace. Do you want me to announce her? Uh, next we have uh, Grace Fabry. I'm not sure if she wants. You want to come up, Grace? <laughs> there you go. What are, what are big brothers for? Uh, Grace got the award for completion as well. Good job, Grace. Um, Michaela, is she not here? Uh, Michaela Ross is not here, but she got the participa uh, participation certificate. Uh, we do have Eliza, however, Eliza Wegman. She got the award for completion, and she also got the uh, merit award, which again is for doing all the verses, review verses, and all the Golden Apple activities every week. Turn around. Turn around so your dad can take a picture. All right, you guys can be seated. Go ahead, be careful. You pick up your picture. Donna, if you want to come up with your whole table. Donna's been serving for 32 years. Um, one thing I like about Donna, she's always got the most creative games. I usually just run to Toys R Us and just buy a big bag, but she'll be thinking about it and all kinds of interesting things. And she also helps out with the Pledge of Allegiance, which is uh, very important. All right, turn around. First, we have uh, Kaylin Sirachi. Surat, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Apologize. She got the award for completion. You want to hold the award so your mom can take a picture? Hold it. Look up. All right, good job. Uh, next, we have Noel James. She got the award for completion. You, you'll get one in a minute, buddy. You know what? Hold your award. Where's her picture? I don't know. I must have lost it. That's all right. We'll find it. Noel, hold this so your, your mom and dad can take a picture. Stand forward. Hold on, Dallas. All right, hold on, Dallas. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Next, we have uh, Hannah Klein. She got the award for completion as well. Hold it. Hold it up so you're not to see it. Alicia's not here. Donna, Alicia's not here. Alicia's not here. Um, Alicia McWilliams isn't here, but she got the participation uh, certificate. Um, next, we have Dallas. You're getting your award now, buddy. <laughs> Get it from Miss Donna. Dallas got the uh, participation certificate as well. You want to hold it up? Good job. All right, good job, guys. Go ahead. Sit down. Oh, uh, Suzanne, if you want to come up. Uh, Suzanne has been serving for five years. Seems like longer. Uh, don't know what we do without her. She does all the crafts and... Uh, Needless to say, we glue a lot of things upside down. So if it wasn't for her, we'd be in real trouble. Turn around, guys. Turn around. Turn around. No shoes. Um, first, we have uh, Arwen Barletta. She got the award for completion. <laughs> Very excited. Hold it, hold it up so they can see it. Hold it down. There you go. Smile. Next, we have, uh, I guess, Janae Farrell's not here. She got the participation certificate. Um, Elena Folk. 
hold your award. She got the uh, particip participation certificate. Hold on, wait. Uh, Sarah Molly got the uh, participation certificate too. She's also not here. Next we have Nadia Palma. She had the award for completion. Look at your dad. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. And uh, next we have Eliana Fesky. She got the uh, participation certificate. And that wraps up the three-year-olds. All right, now we're getting to the four-year-old class. Before we call our kids up, I just have a couple things I'd like to say. First of all, thank you to all you parents out there for working with the kids all year. Why don't you give yourselves a hand of applause, please? I just want to say by the end of the year, these kids have memorized 25 verses. They've learned six core truths which are God is creator, God is the one true God, Jesus is the good shepherd, Jesus loves all people, Jesus came to save us, and Jesus says to go out and tell the good news. We had lots of fun this year, we had pajama night, we had pizza parties, we had Valentine's Day party, we had color night, where they had to come dressed as their, the color of their table that they sit at. We had puppet shows. Um, and we, every year for the past five years, we've had missionary night where we invite a real life missionary to come in and talk to the kids. And this year we had Gary Sauer with Athletes in Action come in and talk about how, man, if you wanna be a missionary, you don't have to go across the sea you know, to some faraway place. You can go right down the street to your local college and minister to the people there. So that was just a blessing to have him there. And, uh, um, and I just want to say this special recognition. Every week there is an optional opportunity to do a review verse and an activity to reinforce the core truth. And we want to specially recognize the faithful work by these parents and children with our Golden Medal Award. And before I start... I want to mention that we had 14 kids in our class this year that are going to receive the golden medal. And they are Jeremiah Fry, Nathan Burrett, Sebastian Zitz, Rachel Goodfriend, Keaton Griffiths, Shane Burnett, uh, Annabelle Tellis, Grayson Williams, Matthew Pulver, Isaac Way, Carson Miller, Paisley Grape, and Elena Curley. So why don't you... Give a big hand to those parents and kids that worked hard this year for that. Now, we are going to pass out the awards. So let's have Sarah Coleman come up with her table. Come right up here on stage. We have Melissa Gar... Oh, before, before I say any more, I forgot to add this. Instead of clapping in the four-year-old class, we give a big, hearty amen when somebody gets an award. So let's continue that trend here in awards night. So I'll read off the kids' names, and then we can give a big, hearty amen for them. We have Melissa Garcia, Peyton Mall, Jeremiah Fry, Nathan Barrett, and Sebastian. Amen. All right, good job, guys. Next, I'd like to call up Sheila Mc... Oh, I'm sorry, Sarah, this was Sarah's third year serving with us, and she's been a blessing this year. 
Uh, Sheila McLeod, would your table please come on up? Sheila's been serving for 34 years. At least, she says, at least 34. And I'm at least 34 years old. So imagine that. Sheila's been a real blessing. She uh, does story time at the end. Um, she helps out with game time and song time. She's just a blessing to have in our room. And uh, at her table, getting awards tonight are Anthony Castellano, Rachel Goodfriend, Keaton Griffiths, Shane Burnett, Chase Campbell, and Annabelle Tellis. Amen. Well, it's been my privilege to, hear, to uh, be able to be their leader this year. We, I had a great time. This was great. It was hard. We had six kids every week. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Sheila. Next, we have Eric Holler's table. This is Eric's second year serving with us. And we also had um, Ethan Hamilton came in and helped us out. He was a junior leader. I don't think he's here tonight, but he was our Rookie of the Year leader. So at his table, we have Alex Willard, Colton Walker, Anthony Lazaro, Jackson Alansi, Grayson Williams, and Matthew Pulver. Oh, amen, guys. That's great. All right, you guys can go have a seat, guys. Next, I'd like to call up Mr. John Stoffel and his table. John's been serving for 33 years. John is our game leader, and he's also our chief paper airplane engineer. And at, at his table, we have Jackson Spargo, Colton Copeland, Nico Vasquez, Dexter Alansi, Isaac Way, and Carson Miller. Amen. All right, thank you guys. Next up we have Ms. Sue Stoffel and her table. She has been serving for 31 years. And she is one of our song leaders. She teaches the kids all these crazy songs to sing. And we have at her table Lily Jewell Emmeline Fabry and Paisley Grape. Amen. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. 
And finally, last but not least, I'd like to call up Janelle Miles and her table. This is Janelle's 16th year serving. She does all of our crafts. And again, like Kevin said, without her, we'd be just lost. We'd just be dumping glue on paper and just like, whatever happens, happens. But at her table, we have Evelyn Johnson, Piper Storm, Maya Holler, Hope Sasso, Gianna Grape, and Elena Curley. Amen. Good job, guys. And last, I can't, uh, I can't end the award ceremony without a special recognition to my wife, the secretary and co-director of Four-Year-Old Cubbies, who does all the behind-the-scenes work and basically makes me look good. She, but she does all the, uh, all the hard stuff, so let's all give her a hand of applause, please. Amen. And with that, the awards portion of this ceremony is done. I'd like to ask Kevin to come back for a closing word of prayer and an important announcement about ice cream. Here you go. Thanks. Yes, the last announcement about ice cream. Um, we have enough ice cream for the, the boys and girls, all their brothers and sisters, so if you could uh, let them have the ice cream first. If there's any left, adults, feel free to have some after that. Um, and if you could just let the cubbies and their families go first, that would be great. And with that, we'd just like to close in a word of prayer. So join me, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for a, a great year, a safe year, a fun year we've had with the three and four-year-olds, Lord. I pray that you would give them uh, and their families a safe and uh, refreshing summer off. And we look forward to seeing each and every three and four year old hopefully coming back to the Cubbies and Sparkies program next year. And uh, Lord, we just uh, pray for safe travels home. And we ask that you would bless this time of fellowship and food. And uh, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Should we? I should not do every person. I'm